worked on. Wide going, and this takes just a second, and then I can close it out and we can get started. So, but I love doing it live because then our recording is just right there on the team page already. Okay, it's almost there. It likes to go live before it tells me it's gone live, so we're probably live, but I have to wait to close this. Come on, you can do it. Okay. Well, you're going to have to show me how to do this because I've been trying to figure it out and I well, can't. Everybody says that I should show them how to do it. But then I tell everybody it was so complicated to figure out. It really was. But I've tried so many different things. Yeah. So there's like a hidden feature in your team page. You have to like go into the settings and you have to add Zoom as an allowed app on okay. the team page. So just, okay. I had to just Google it. It's I'll still it again. the live stream, but we're recording. I'm sure that'll get going. Um, so okay. Rena, are you going to be brave and introduce Tracy since she's your guest, or are we going to hide ourselves from your nastiness that's going on? Well, I, I did mean to shut off the video because nobody needs to see that, but, um, yeah, I'll let, because <laughs> coughing can happen at any point. So Tracy, thank you so very much for agreeing to do this. I think the world of you and even more so since we've been talking about your story over the weekend, but um, I'm going to let Kendall take it from here since, um, yeah, Melissa, <laughs> there's just so much happening you over here. You just think of dog. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, we just wanted to bring Tracy on here because she she's a fellow Emerald, but I just, I mean, even just hearing her message of just kind of her heart shift in her business over this last year, and I'm not going to steal her thunder because I know that she's going to be talking about this, um, but you, you guys know we just love to bring genuine people who are doing good things with their business and with their team to pour into, share some ideas, share some tips and just things that have worked for them and maybe discoveries they've made that have helped them along the way. So Tracy girl, you take it away and I may be picking your brain at the end and y'all all know <laughs> You are welcome to ask questions. So be thinking of questions. Okay. Please do. And I'll pull up the chat too. So if you have questions, drop them in there and I'll hit them as we go. Um, but yes, my name is Tracy Fogel. Um, thank you so much for having me. Like it's always such an honor when a fellow Jewel is like, Hey, will you talk to our team? It's like, Oh, okay. Yes, I will. Um, and so I want to start by just sharing a little bit about me because I think I had seen people succeed in network marketing and I didn't really ever think that could be something that I could do. Um, you know, maybe they had backgrounds in marketing or they were the person who was like the cheerleading captain or like always, you know, just had a group of people around them. Okay. And, um, I, um, I went to college, I got my degree in graphic design. So while I was in marketing, I was the design person. I was the one laying out notebooks. Um, I was doing magazine spreads on that side of things and, um, really, um, knew I wanted more for myself and my family. Um, knew that the Lord had given me some skills and talents that I wasn't tapping into in that career but also knew that like, I had a really good job. How many of y'all have ever had a really good job, right? Like good boss, good pay, all of those things. Um, and then we had our first baby. And I think for a lot of women, moms specific, that is when something inside of you shifts and you realize that what has now become your greatest priority um, will never be your boss's greatest priority. And so that shift started for me in 2015 when I became a mom. Um, I, I saw my friends sharing about Plexus. I had friends succeed in other network marketing companies. Um, we're in the Dallas area. And so there are a lot of companies that are very big here. Um, and I'd seen friends do well. I was not supporting them. I didn't do that kind of thing. I didn't buy from MLM people. Okay. That was me. Um, and in, let's see, the fall of 2016, um, my sweet friend Paige, Paige Greenway um, is my sponsor. She reached out to me and said, hey, I don't know if you've seen what I'm doing with Plexus, but um, I wondered if you'd ever thought about trying it. And I said, you know, I've heard great things, um, but it's not for, for me right now. And she was so kind and um, knew that finances were an issue. I was selling calendars that I had designed at the time. Um, 
fast forward four months, um, during four months from October to February, I had back-to-back -back mastitis and was thrown into postpartum depression, gained 20 pounds in four months and was a shadow of myself. I didn't recognize myself when I looked in the mirror, I was pulling out my maternity clothes again. And, um, I was desperate and I remembered she had been following up with me consistently to which I had either not responded or said no. Um, and then she made a post about the signs of, of you may need gut health. And y'all, it was like the cheesiest post. It was like save 34 95 and like sign one, two, three, four. And it was four in the morning. Cause I had insomnia, like of course I couldn't sleep with all of those health issues happening. And I messaged her and I said, um, friend, do you think this could help me? And she was up with her toddler and she messaged me back at 5 a.m. and said, absolutely. And I said, great, what do you need to get me started? Sent her all of my info, social security number included at the time and had my products ordered before 7 a.m. that day. Um, Y'all, I'd say all of that because I think sometimes it's important that we remember who we were before we started. Y'all, I'm not messaging people now looking for who I am today. I'm messaging people looking for who I was then. Desperate, exhausted, tired, and broken. Um, very quickly, I, I was aware of the opportunity with Plexus. I'd been told about my referral link. Um, I saw my sponsor actually rank to Ruby and I saw the little income disclosure posted in the comments and I looked at it and I told my husband, I said, look at this, no way, no way, no way she went Ruby and is earning over, you know, $2,000 a month. So I messaged her, I said, Paige, are you actually making what that graphic says that you're making? And at this point, I'm like a week into the products. And she was like, actually, I made more than that last month. And she like snapshotted me a little screenshot of her paycheck. I was like, that's crazy. Can you help me? She was like, can I help you do what? <laughs> Y'all, we're all so new, right? I said, can you help me do that? Like if I can go Ruby, I can quit my job and be home. And she said, yeah. And y'all, I started sharing two weeks after I took my first taste of the pink drink. And I think that's something that is really unique because I think a lot of people, their story is months, years into this journey, then they see a need. Um, or they start sharing very hesitantly from the beginning, very slow and steady. Um, two weeks in, I said, what do I need to do? I wanna do that. I started sharing every single day. Um, I always tell people my first selfie was that day when I asked her, what do I do? And she said, take a selfie. And I said, a what? <laughs> a selfie. So y'all, I posted, I invited people on this journey with me and slowly I started to believe that I could do this. Um, I had never done this before. In fact, I, I was a graphic designer, but they put me in charge of sales for one month and promptly took that role away from me. They were like, you can't sell things. And I think these are the things that run through our head, right? Up until about three years ago. So 2017, three years ago, I believed that lie. You can't sell things. And so that's where I was when I started this journey. I was a desperate mom. I wanted to be home with my babies and I was willing to do anything to do that. And this is really where I feel like it's like your greatest asset is also your greatest hurdle. Have y'all ever felt that before? Like I'm really good at that, but that's also the hardest thing for me. So I was very, very driven. I was not afraid of the work. I showed up every single day. I would sit in my car after I finished my, gra my graphic design job. I would do my IPA and I would sign people up and then I would come home and be present with my family. And I did this. I went gold and then I went senior gold. I had people sharing with me because I was super bold with the opportunity. I, I believed if I could do this, why couldn't anybody else do this? Um, and about 14 months in, like 16 months into my journey with Plexus, I quit my job as a graphic designer um, to be home. I was pregnant with my second son 
And um, we decided that we could make that work. And so there was this shift also of like, I thought when I would use this to replace my income, there would be abundance. Um, But actually replacing my income was like, we took one income of $2,000 and replaced it with another income of $1,800. And so we were very, very tight financially. Um, I was still having to, you know, check my Plexus order every month, only er order certain things to fit into that budget that we had for these products. Um, But I did it. I went Ruby um, this summer. So it was, I joined in February. I went Ruby the next July. And y'all, I was on a high, high, high. Um, I, I truly, I had all of this pride in this business because my sponsor was proud of me. She would introduce me and, oh my goodness, this is Tracy. She, she's just gone Ruby and she's only been with Plexus for a little over a year. And oh my goodness, like, look at her, look at her. Like she did this and y'all, that's what it was. I did this. Okay. So if you're picking up a piece that is missing from this, it is, I did this, not we did this. Okay. So I got to Ruby. I got to Ruby and I checked that box and then I had my baby head down, kept running and I got to senior Ruby. Okay. Checked that box and then crap hit the fan. Okay. You don't want to be alone on the mountaintop because it's a real, real lonely. And sometimes people like there are people involved. Okay. So at senior Ruby is where I like to say the Lord intervened. (laughs) And he was like, oh, sister, have you got a lesson to learn? about pride and selfishness and doing things by yourself. Let me go ahead and bring you back down to your booty and teach you a lesson. Are you willing and are you ready to learn? And y'all, this was the hardest season of my business because up until this point, everything had been going very steadily up. And while I know all of our stories are different, we all hit this plateau or even a downward spiral at some point in our business, because we have to be willing to grow to move forward. And so I had a senior gold on my team who earned leaders retreat y'all called me and told me I'm taking the cash. I don't want anything to do with this anymore. Yep. I, I had silvers and senior silvers and golds telling me they didn't want anything. Like if if this was building a business, they didn't want any part of it anymore. Um, and I realized that, that the only thing I could change in this moment was me. I couldn't put another goal out there. I couldn't put another challenge out there. Like everything was falling flat everything. And so I realized the only thing I can change is me. And, um, I invested in some coaching, which was a huge conversation with my husband because we did not have ex- ex- or excess at the time. We were living very much like paycheck to paycheck and investing in my leadership, investing in my growth was not something that we just had. Oh yeah, let's go spend that money. And so it was huge for me because he said, yeah, I think this is worth it. Like he believed in me enough to say, yeah, let's invest in that. And the first thing that I heard that first day, um, I signed up for Bob Heilig training, which it's not for everybody. Hear me say that. There are a lot of incredible trainers. Some people on my team have done it and been like, I didn't get anything from that. Cool. I needed it. I needed to hear people over points, people over points. I'd been chasing points so hard for the last two years that I did not see any of the people at all associated with those points. And it brought me to my knees, you guys. And I realized one, this introvert is going to have to get unintroverted for a while. And two, this is a people business. And we didn't have culture on our team. We like, 
all worked alone and then would like come together every now and then for different things. And so I started asking myself, like, what do I want this to look like? Like, what do I want this to be? What do I want this to feel like? If I were somebody on my team, what would I want that to be? And so I reached out to um, the two workers that I still had. One is my cousin, Michelle. Y'all, she is just wisdom beyond her years. And she bought into me before I bought into me. And then one of my friends, Allie, she's actually my level two um, under her friend who took the cash instead of leaders retreat. Okay. And um, I called them on the phone. We don't do that often. And I said, Hey, I'm learning some things and I'm seeing some gaps in my leadership. And I want to do this differently but I need to know, like, are you in or are you out? Like, what do you think here? And this was in the fall of 2019. And Michelle said, oh girl, I'm in. She said, I see the growth happening in you. I see like what you're trying, like I see it and I'm in, I want this for my family. And Allie said the same thing. I want it. And she said one caveat, Tracy, and y'all, let me, I'm an introvert, right? By nature. I love people, which is something I've had to realize over the past several years, but I am an introvert. And she said, Allie, she said, Tracy, I want to work together every day. And I was like, like every day, like every single one. And she was like, mm -hmm. yeah, because I'm here for the party. And I was like, can I work with Allie every single day? Do I believe that Allie can be a jewel? Do I believe that, that her partnership is one that I want in this business? And the resounding answer was yes. And y'all, Allie Hostin is an emerald today, okay? She was gold when we had that conversation in 2019. So here's what happened. I laid down my own goals, like laid them down. I had fallen back to Ruby or below Ruby points. So it was, it was definitely a, a very humble, um, like, okay, take, like, take it all, take it all. I don't want to chase orders. I don't want to do this that way anymore. And we linked arms and we just started working together. We started Marco Poloing together. We started creating this friendship in this community that we had never had in Plexus before. And I feel like we always talk about one Plexus and how the community and the culture is what sets us apart. But when you've kind of done things on your own to get where you're going, it, it really is revolutionary when you start linking arms with people and partnering with them and strategizing and doing all of these things. And so we just started running. We just started getting on Motivation Mondays together and then hopping on a Zoom afterwards and processing what we just learned. And um, we carved out time every day at the same time to hop on and do our IPAs and invite new people on this journey. And we went from enrolling like five people a month between the three of us to enrolling like 30, 40, and then 50 people duplicating down. And um, in June of 2020, um, I ranked to Emerald, um, Michelle double ranked to Ruby, Allie ranked to Senior Gold. We all soared together and we brought tons of people on this journey with us. And um, I think the biggest thing I have learned in this, this journey with Plexus is um, this idea of like working hard towards something that's important to you and also realizing that you're serving and leading people and people are messy. And like, you don't get to choose that like, you know, one of your leaders took their kids to college this week and, and, and the week has gone by, right? And like, that may not align with your goals, but you can love them through that. And I think this is the hardest thing that we do. And it's, it's still my greatest struggle because what wound up happening is I flipped all the way to service. So I was like, well, let's just help more people. Let's just lift more people up. Let's just do this together. And then I wasn't running towards goals. 
Now, there's got to be a balance there. And y'all, that's that's really where I am today is, is figuring out and navigating this people business, goal setting, leading with by example, um, pushing towards something, having grace for the hard seasons. Y'all, the last two years of, of my life have been littered with chaos. Um, the day after I got home from Emerald Extravaganza in 2021, I had a miscarriage. Um, two weeks later, my son had his first seizure. Like, fast forward, I now have an eight-month-old little guy. God is so good and has redeemed so much, but there's, there's grace for that, right? There's grace for walking through hard and you have to not only extend that to yourself, but also to your team. And, and what we do is messy and it's hard. And, you know, it's so funny because Rena was like, Tracy brag on yourself. What, what is incredible that you wish you could like that somebody would be like, Tracy did this. And y'all I was telling them I ranked Emerald in 2020 and I've never lost rank. Like I've, I've maintained that we've raised up leaders. I've helped my first teammate go Emerald and then watch her in her own messiness with figuring out leadership and bringing her team on this with her and raising up leaders. And, um, I've, I've watched friends whose husbands have lost jobs, who've walked through tragedy, who've, you know, had miscarriages and, um, added new babies and all of these things, right? And the thing that just keeps coming to mind is gratitude. Like I am so grateful I never stopped. I'm so grateful I never stopped working. I'm so grateful I never stopped learning and growing. And like, when I look at this journey as a whole, um, my vision is very, very clear. I don't know who's calling me. It's probably a sales call from China. Um, but my my vision is very clear. And I think that is my greatest asset and my greatest weakness because I'm not running for Sapphire tomorrow. I'm not running for Diamond tomorrow. Like I don't, there's no one shot here. Um, it's very big picture and very um raising up leaders and bringing people on this journey with me. Um, I think it's really easy to get in a, if I don't do this this month, I'm going to never have this opportunity again, right? If I don't go gold this month, I'm going to miss it. Or if I don't, you know, earn the cruise this month, it's my one shot for leaders retreat, right? And y'all like, it's not. What I want to challenge you with is to be building a business in a way that feels life-giving and good, that, that lets you go to sleep and wake up excited to invite more people on this journey with you. I know that you have incredible leaders, but the thing is, you yourself are also a leader and your friends are joining you on this journey. They're not joining Kindle. They're not joining Rena, right? They're joining you. And so by you kind of deciding what, what do I want this to look like? What do I want this to feel like? What do I want this to be? How do I want people to leave after they've like been in a, in my presence? Do I want them to leave feeling like they've been added to or like taken from, you know what I'm saying? Like just that feeling of abundance. And so as I kind of like look at where we're headed, y'all, we're bringing more people on this journey with us. We're doing it in a way that feels life-giving and sustainable in a way that feels like raising people up and working really hard and figuring out how to run for goals, but also serve people. And it, it's messy and it's not perfect. But um, I think the thing that if you asked anybody on my team, they would say, um, what, like, what do you love the most about being a part of this team? It's the community. And it's that we're all in the trenches together all the time. Um, they never have to doubt if, if it's a hard day or if, you know, if I'm going to be on or be present somewhere, um, I I'm in the trenches right with them. And so that's my story. I would love to answer any questions you guys have. Um, yeah, you guys <laughs> unmute, put it in the chat. I like, I just, I, your story is captivating. Like it was like just hearing it. I know everybody connected to it. Um, but a question I had is like, so 
I'm very driven too. I'm very goal, you know, oriented. I'm very red, but I also do love people. I, Rena accuses me of having no heart. I'm no yellow, but I am. Everybody else but Rena will say I actually do have a heart. Okay. <laughs> but I want to like, how does this play out in your day to day? So like when you're having business conversations, when you're taking care of your customers, when you're bringing a new person in, like what are the day-to-day -day things that you have found align with both of those, both being goal-driven, because that's not bad to be goal-driven, but it is if it forsakes the relationship with people, right? Points over people. Right. Yeah, that's bad. right. So how have you found this balance with your actual activity? Um, I think for me, um, it's having purposeful conversations and and serving people well. So I'm not a, a super high enroller. Like I think I've added eight people during this contest. Like I, I'm just, I'm not going to be on the leaderboards for that. But of those eight, I have three or four sharing. Um, it's, it's leading with the opportunity and, and serving them. And so like, I have a sweet friend, Katie, who um, she's shared a little bit. She really wants to get her products for free, but she's really busy right now. And so just meeting her where she's at and offering something, but it's never like for her to go and do it's for like us to do together. And so, um, it was, you know, Hey friends, like, I know that Mondays are really crazy for you and you may not want to be, we have a call at eight 30 for our, um, girls who are growing to gold. That's what we call it or growing to gold call. And, and that may not be what is going to serve you well in this season, but I'm wondering, could you and I connect and figure out what is going to work for you in this season of life? Um, it, it to me, and, and again, Kendall, I do not have this all figured out. I have like PTSD a little bit from running so hard for goals, You'd be perfect, <laughs> right? But like, I think it's just finding, I always tell my team, how can you help somebody if you don't know what they want? And if you know what they want, we call them clarifying conversations, then until they tell you to stop, you can help them. Right? Yeah, absolutely true. Um, Rena doesn't want to unmute. So she told me to ask you, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, like, how do you lead with the business? So obviously you're doing great with that. Like, do you lead with the business prior to even signing them up or do you lead with the products and you're just great at having that business conversation after the fact? Um, I think it's, it's kind of both. Um, so I'm going to give a couple of examples. One, my, I have a friend named Mary Carmen. She just went fast start gold in June, right after convention. Um, she came to convention two months into sharing Plexus and she lives nearby. And so when she asked me, she messaged me about my reset results, which that's a whole different story. Um, I've lost 30 pounds since February utilizing the reset. So that, that has opened some doors for moms who are stuck. And so we met at the park and went uh, for a walk and she was just asking me, she was like, I mean, what, like, I don't know that we could afford these products. And I was like, cool. Like you're spicy. She's Venezuelan. Like you can share and you can get your products for free. She was like, people don't make money doing this. And y'all, I'm not even kidding. While we're walking, I get the Plexus pay text and it's like, <laughs> And I was like, Mary, do you think people don't get paid? And I showed her my thing. And she was like, are you freaking kidding me, Tracy? And y'all, we weren't even close friends, but she's a neighbor and a fellow elementary school mom with me. And it's like knowing your audience. I wouldn't do that with everybody, but with her, she filed it away. And so um, when she had seen incredible results after her first reset, we revisited it. And I said, remember how I told you I could help you share? She was like, I don't know, like history. My parents did that in Venezuela. It didn't go too well. And I just invited her to join some of our like team things. And she saw that this was different and she started sharing and y'all, she is going to do incredible things. Um, on the flip side, I have a friend named Bridget who just wants to take the products, but she's referred to friends as a VIP because I'm just like, Hey, somebody asks you what you're doing, like go tell them. So I think it's meeting them where they're at, but every, I will tell you every VIP, except for my friend, Jenny's mom, because that's just still kind of a hard bridge for me. You know, your friend's mom that you've known since you were like 13, um, 
but everybody who comes into my organization, I, I tell them, and if you are pulling me into a three-way message, so that's part of our customer care is my level ones will introduce me to their new customers. They know in that first message, I'm going to say, and I know Kendall has told you about the opportunity to get your products for free. Um, so if that's something we can help you with also, you know, just message back and we'll get you started on that journey. And they have started being like, oh yeah, yeah, Kim told me, she told me, I'm, I'm thinking about it, you know, but my team's like, dang it, you're, I have to do it because then you're going to come in and you're going to be like, I know that she told you about this. I love that. <laughs> so I kind of modeled that in the, yeah, in the duplication. That's awesome. Do you guys have like a team boards with um, like systems or things that y'all do that has been beneficial? Um, we have boards. Yes. Um, we have a customer care board. <clears throat> we have, um, event boards that we utilize. Um, right now we're actually doing live zoom events, just trying that again, because that worked so well for us getting people on. Um, boards are tough though, because what I have found is this, um, a lot of people, when they have a new share, they're like, go download the boards app. I'm going to send you all the boards. And then they send like 10 boards and the person's like, mm -hmm. I don't know what to do with this. And so um, I have a rule and it's that you can't send somebody a board without showing them how to use, how it is used first. So you model first and then you can tell them about the app and how simple it is to use. So yeah, we have team boards and we, we use our boards. Well, Many of us do some like Rena or like, nah, you know, I think it's just yeah. different personalities. I'm, I love boards, but agreed. I never, ever send a board and say, now you have all the tools go and do right. It's yeah. bite sized pieces. So I'm like, hey, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. Uh -huh. I walk it through and I'm like, Hey, you know what? Everything that we just did, like with a three-way chat or something like we actually have a great place where all that saved. So you have it for next time. You know, the, the problem is some people don't do that. They like, yes. Agreed. Yes. Micro commitments, bite size. Reverse, reverse. I agree. So yeah. Rena, that was another Rena question. She wanted to know if you have team. Yeah. yeah, we use boards. We also have like notes folder. Like if somebody doesn't want that, we'll send them a note um, that has all that info in it. Well, there's so much goodness here. I mean, I'm going to be re-listening to this because it's just, it's good to remember. I mean, and we all know, right? Like, I mean, we have, these ladies here are fantastic. And I think everybody here has been trying to be super intentional at the transformational over transactional. It's something we've talked about a lot, but you know, it's hard, right? When you have a goal and you work hard and you just have this vision for your family of what you want to do and provide for them, it's hard to find that balance. And I'm sure you still, every day, it's something you have to consciously focus on and totally a war. Yeah. Yeah. All the time. I mean, I was just talking to one of my sidelines about this and I was like, it is, it is such a war when like, you know, you could maybe be somewhere or be further, but you're intentionally pausing and saying like, I, I need to raise leaders right now. Like I need this to happen, not this to happen. And, um, it's what we do is hard y'all it's simple but it's it's hard and there's so much mindset stuff that goes into it and I wish I could tell you like it, it goes away but I think it just shifts and changes and um and relationships are hard like this is a relationship business and so navigating that and as an introvert or an extrovert like it's hard from both of those perspectives at different times. Are there any books that you've really liked as far as like personal development, personal growth? My favorite book right now is Eat That Frog. I have not heard of this one. Okay. <laughs> I, it's I mean, a quick read. Kids um, book basically, I guess is the word I'm looking for. <laughs> Eat That Frog. Um, it's, it's truly, it's a quick read. I read it um, on the way to and from gold school a couple of weeks ago. And, um, it just really talks about, um, knowing what you're working towards and making those things a priority. So much time, there's so much noise. Um, and that is what winds up distracting. 
but getting very clear on what are the things you can delegate? What are the things that only you can do? Um, and, and are those in alignment with where you're wanting to go or are those just like things that you're doing? Right. Um, yeah. I love it. Okay. And I'm gonna have to order that book. It's, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> so does anybody else have a question that y'all want to ask before we let Tracy go back to her night? Well, I just want to say thank you. Um, yeah, I sound terrible, but um, You're so good. yeah, thank you so very much. And, um, you know, and I think in this business, there's always lessons to be learned. Um, and I feel like that's the difference with, you know, network marketing than any other industry is they always never stop learning, never stop growing, never stop trying to be better, 1% better. Um, learn from your mistakes, own your mistakes. Um, and I feel like that's really in a season of where I'm at. And I can relate to so much of your story as the team of me, right? I was the team of me for so long because that's what I can control, you know, but it's lonely and it's, you play out of desperation from there. And I can tell you um, so much pride. I mean, my girls will tell you like, um, when these girls have hit their, their cruise goals or whatever their goals are is, gosh, you're right. There's just such, such a, so, so different, even wanting to show up um, when you are, when you're lifting others up and you're, what are your goals? What do, what do you want out of this? How can I help you? Let's run some numbers. Let's crunch some, let's recrunch some numbers. Let's let, let what do I need to do? What do you know? <clears throat> I don't know. So just so much of your story. And it is very unique. You, I was telling Kendall after I talked to you is we need to stop normalizing. It's okay to lose rank. It's fine. Like it's okay. Like if you lose rank, that's okay. But let's let's stop making it the norm. Let's stop. Are oh, you gonna push, 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 and just accept that you're gonna fall back? You know, and that's where you know <laughs> having you know, running with, up, uh, but I said, the only way you maintain it is through raising up others. Exactly. Right? Or if you're fighting for it. Yep. And so it's the team of me, you will always lose rank, right? Cause you can only keep that. You can only keep that pace is not sustainable. It's not, it's not sustainable on your own, but when you have others all running together for the common good and really the common, the goal is how many people can we help today? And yes, we do make a very generous income. We get all these fun perks and prizes along the way. But if you don't have, <clears throat> but really it's, who can I help today? Oh, and then I think I was going to ask you, so you now are, you know, lead with the opportunity. And it really is just, is it just as simple as you said, like, hey, I'm not sure if you see what I do this, you know, give me a couple examples of leading what the opportunity looks like for you. <laughs> I mean, I think it, it depends on the person. If it's somebody that I'm like, I legit want this person. So like I have a customer of mine. She's been a VIP for six years, y'all. I've been a VIP. Well, I've been an ambassador for six and a half years. And I am telling you, she is going to do this with me one day. Like they've been walking through their own chaos and they had a daughter with special needs and all sorts of stuff. And, um, but I, I'm like, I, Jenna, you're going to do this with me one day. When is it going to be? And so like, I just lead boldly with her and I follow up with her about every three months. And I'm like, Hey, Jenna is now the time. Like, are you ready to build a business? And she's like, sometimes it's a, maybe sometimes it's a, you know, let's talk a little bit more about it. And sometimes it's a no, not right now. Um, but I think there's one, like not losing hope in people. Um, I think sometimes we get a no and we think that's like no forever more. So there's that aspect of things. Um, and then there's the like talking to people um, and just telling them like, hey, this is my, this is my vision for this. And y'all, this is why you've got to be rock solid on what your vision is for this, because most people aren't going to buy into Plexus. They're going to buy into where you're headed and they want to head that direction also. And so if you're not sure where you're going, um, then how can they like, 
I always say like they hook into your vision until they can create their own. And so if your vision is not set in stone, then they're like, okay, like I'll try sharing and like, see what happens. Um, and usually then like they wind up floundering and maybe sinking, but if your vision is rock solid, if you know where you're headed, they can hook into that while they like build the belief, learn about the company, learn about the products, learn how to grow as a leader, all of those things. And then they wind up having their own rock solid vision. And so Rena, that's how I lead with the, the business is, Hey, like, this is where I'm headed. And so like the conversation with one of my neighbors, like, Hey, I, this is where I'm headed. Like I plan to be a, a active sharing plexus ambassador, like for the foreseeable future. Like I, I think I'll still be going on Emerald extravaganza trips 20 years from now. Like that's the plan for me. And so I'm very, like, I always tell people my goal is for, for my 40th birthday, y'all I'm 37 for my 40th birthday. One of the first things I said, when I started Plexus is I want my best friends to all be jewels with me. And I want us to take a trip to the beach because we can for my 40th birthday. And y'all, I tell people all the time, one of my friends, Kim, I was like, you're, yeah, you're going to be a jewel because you're coming on my 40th birthday trip. Right. And she's like, yes, yes, I am. And like, it's not like scarcity or like, like hoopla, like y'all I'm, that's part of my vision as crazy as that is. And my team has become some of my closest friends. And so like, it's, it, we joke about it, but it's also very like, they can trust that I'm going to be here three years from now, five years from now, 20 years from now. So they can hook into that also. And my neighbor, we've been talking and she's just not sure what she wants to do. And me being clear in my vision means I don't have to rush her into her decision. It means she can really consider is sharing plexus something I want to do because she has time to make a decision because I'm not going anywhere. You see what I'm saying here? And then people like Mary Carmen who want to jump in and go real fast, they they don't have to have a concern either because I'm showing up every day. I'm available and able to help you. And so what I think a rock solid vision does is it allows a lot of different conversations to happen, a lot of different people and different speeds to join you because you're not wavered by the yeses or the noes. Does that make sense? And so you just keep offering and you just keep asking, Rena. No, I... Absolutely. I, I, I would say maybe a few months ago, I wouldn't have really even known what you were saying. I mean, I would have heard you, but I don't know if I, if I would have made the connection. There's been a lot of growth. There's been a lot of growth since July. I've heard, and by the way, I love Bob, like love, love Bob. So when you said Bob, because I was going to ask you like mentor and I'm like, oh, love Bob. I'm in his pain program. Best money I've ever spent. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, truly, um, you know, they say that you have your join date in network marketing, and then you have your birth date. Hmm. And I feel I missed a big goal in um, June, no, July, July 31st, July, June. I don't even remember anymore. Miss, I missed several extravaganza by two months. <laughs> and a lot goes through your head. And I decided the next day, what is it? August 1st. I don't even remember when. I think you have to do it by June, July. I don't even remember. But like when there was, oh, I guess I had to have it by June, had June and July. So, but when I didn't have June, July 1st came along and it's, there's no more, it magically can't happen. I'm not going to have somebody join on the 28th and add 40 people. Like it, it's over. Right. Mm -hmm. And a lot of growth came from just even in that moment, or even in the last six weeks is, um, you know, you have your birthday and I decided July 1st to be my, my birthday with this business. Um, to really analyze and look at things completely different. And so, I don't know, it's, this has been perfect. I, I think tonight you were on for very, I think this is a message. I think we're all, I don't know, I, I our team is pretty close and I think we're all, I think we're all feeling this nudge to move and do things differently. I think we're all feeling it. And so I think you coming on tonight and speaking this is, um, 
not accidental and it definitely um confirmation alignment and all the things so i appreciate you so much i just remembered you said you have your call right after this yeah, and so i know okay, i don't know if you're like me the introverts i'm like i need to decompress after oh. to go into the next one <laughs> no i'm actually not even leading the 8 30 call i delegated that to one of my senior golds so she's leading it i'm so sorry <laughs> She was like, should we do a virtual office training? I was like, yeah, can you do it? Fantastic. That's what awesome. Kendall, what Kendall Moore is saying, girl, it's eight, it's eight 15. I just got home. I got kids. A husband got a feed. Oh, I'm saying, I just, it. Karina can chase squirrels in her conversation. So when we hear June, July, August, was it June? Was it August? June, July 31st, 30. Hey, there's, there's a lot of cold medicine behind this right now. Okay. I don't know what, I don't even know what year we're in right now. So, well, and, and Rena, <laughs> I will tell you this, one of the characteristics I look for in leaders. And one of the things I look for in my teammates is, is to see how they respond to failure. Um, is it a opportunity for growth or is it a groveling, right? Is it a making it mean something about me? Or is it a, wow, I worked hard and I didn't reach that goal. Something needs to shift, right? Realizing that I'm the only thing I can control in my business. Um, that's really a hard lesson. And um, I've had to walk myself through that. I've had to walk teammates through that of missing goals, missing trips, right? Those kinds of things. and. Um, I think that's just such an opportunity for growth and for you to be able to step into being the type of leader that, that you want to be, to look internal instead of external. Well, if, if these people had showed up differently or if, you know, this person had done what they said they wanted to do, right. Instead of being like, wow, like, how can I lead better? Like, how can I do this differently? That's huge. Well, we're all guaranteed to fail in this. And I was listening to a Brittany Howard training and she talks about how that feel felt found, right? Like when somebody misses a goal or has something happen, the only way that you can say, I understand how you feel when that happened to me here, you know, here's how I felt and here's what I found through that, right? Like yeah. our failure is the only way we can help our people through theirs and help them move past that. Because otherwise you'd be like, oh, I've never missed a goal. I'm, I don't, I can't relate. I'm so sorry. Like. I am telling you, and I feel like that is why the Lord brought me to my knees that summer of 2019. Cause that, that, I, I don't know what it feels like to not go fast start goals. I, I don't know what it feels like to hit a goal or set a goal and not hit it. Like that must suck. Like that was my man. That must suck. Are you going to be here tomorrow? And like, they be like, I just missed a goal. I'm not quitting. I'm like, well, I might would have, if I were like, truly, this was the growth I had to walk through. And, um, it, I, I wouldn't be the, the leader I am today. I wouldn't be the person I am today, the wife, the friend, the mom, if I hadn't walked through all of these things. And y'all, it's like, I always tell my team it's, it's about plexus. Yeah. But like, it's about so many other things that, that this is impacting that have nothing to do with plexus. Like plexus is the vehicle. And I think it's the vehicle that the Lord has used to, to just mold me and shape me and kind of get a hold of me, um, to have the impact that, that I knew I could have, but I just didn't know how. I love it. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Much. And guys, thank you all for being here. And those that, well, I couldn't get the Facebook live to work. The one time I'm telling you I'm doing it, it didn't work. It still says preparing live stream. It never finished. Oh, man. Anyway, but I have the recording, so I'll get that uploaded and I'll share it with you if this is something you want to share with your team too. Yes, so. Y'all, thank you for having me. I appreciate it.